But welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Um, it's amazing what the laws of physics can do. I mean, this is a sheet of copper here, which I'm going to be using as mirrors on my little Chinese laser there. I take these to a friend of mine who has a, a Bistronic fibre laser. It's cutting these little copper discs out of two millimetre copper in about two seconds each. It's just absolutely phenomenal to watch the machine working. At a different wavelength of light, down at one, mi one micron, this is completely absorptive of that wavelength of light. It's quite phenomenal. That's the laws of physics for you. I've had quite a few of these discs cut because I'm expecting my copper mirrors to be a great success. <laughs> now, I've got far too many mirrors here to use in my lifetime, but while I was there, and as they were cutting so quickly, and as this, had, this piece of material had been in my workshop for the past six or seven years, I thought, well, I may as well, while I'm there, get it all done, just in case. Now, cutting these discs was only the first part of the exercise. You've seen me struggling on several occasions to try and make flat copper mirrors and failing not completely but certainly my mirrors were not flat they worked pretty well but not good enough so I bought myself some copper mirrors supposedly copper mirrors from China now two of them are still in new condition I sent these discs away to a company that has got professional lapping equipment I sent my two copper mirrors, my two gold coated copper mirrors. Uh, there's a bit of a question mark over what that yellow stuff is on there. It certainly didn't perform like gold the last time we tested them. But anyway, they measured these mirrors in their metrology laboratory and they're telling me that this particular one is flat to within about six light bands. That means they're flattish but not very good. And this one is nine light bands. I won't tell you quite what the guy said to me, but in essence it amounted to the fact, Binham, he hasn't put a great deal of effort into these. And what he's produced here, he's produced 10 that are to within one light band. <laughs> so they're 10 times flatter than that one, or nine times flatter than that one, and six times flatter than that one. And then we've got some trial ones here which are these which look pretty good to me but he said oh he said i put those back in because they weren't too good but i suspect that these are still two or three light bands they're probably still two or three times better than these brass <laughs> oh brass sorry <laughs> these gold coated <coughs> my my tongue drop out mirrors well while i've been waiting for the mirrors to be polished I've been doing a lot more research work on the reflectivity of different types of materials and there isn't that much data out there that's, um, what can I say, tabulated. There are a few graphs but this is an interesting set of data that applies to our first test. Now I'm going to start these tests off by checking my molybdenum mirrors that came with the machine. I've cleaned the mirrors up and I've cleaned the lens up and we're going to do just a once through the system test. Um, I'm going to take the lens off and we'll check it after three mirrors. Now I'm going to do it after three mirrors and divide the result by three because I feel that that's probably a more meaningful test than trying to get an individual mirror done. I've set all, I've done all the mirrors We'll just check that the beam is correct before we start and that we're not losing any serious transmission because I'm out of line with the mirrors. So molybdenum's the first thing that we're interested in. And I found this rather interesting, very old tabulated set of data that dates back to over 100 years ago. But hey, metal has been around for millions of years, so it's not going to change just because it's 100 years old. So the reflectivity is the same 100 years ago as it is today. What we find is, this is interesting because I want you to note also we've got silver here as a reference. They regard silver as being a, a very stable and predictable reflective material. And so consequently, silver was used as the reference to compare all these other materials against. But I will just point out to you that silver at 10 microns wavelength 
as showing here with a reflectivity of 90, 99%. At the same time, molybdenum, it was a polished molybdenum mirror that they were checking, was only 94.5%. Bearing in mind these are laboratory conditions and these are done with extreme scientific rigour. Now I'm not applying the same rigorous standards here to any tests that I'm doing and I suppose my approach is really shed science. It's approximate to give us an idea, to get an understanding, but not actually to write any scientific papers. If they can only achieve 94.5%, I really mustn't be too disappointed if I get something in the region of a 15% loss across three mirrors. That's what this work is telling me. I don't have any silver mirrors, but let's just take a look at where silver rates on the overall scheme of things. I found this information as well, which is reflectivity of certain metals that we have been rather interested in. One of them is silver, which is the solid line at the top here. The other one is gold, which is this dotted line here. And the third one is aluminium, which is down here. Now, this is 98%, this bottom red line. The top line is 99%. And this line down here is the 10.6 micron area that we're interested in. So here's how our results should compare. But the interesting thing here is aluminium. Now I'm going to point this out to you because there's a bit of a conflict between the data and it makes you wonder what the actual facts are. At 10.6 microns, uh, aluminium is probably in the region of about 1% lower than gold or silver. And this chart shows silver as silver, platinum as a slightly lighter silver, copper in its own colour, and aluminium. Now, if we look at this black aluminium trace here, as it goes up towards 10.6 microns, you'll see that it seems on here to just about hit 99%, which is roughly what it said on, on this chart here, about 98.7. So the scaling of this is rather vague up the top here. Because look, this is 98% and this is 99%. Very, very little differences. You can't really discern much what's going up here at the area that we're really interested in. Except that copper appears to be about 98%. And silver and gold appear to be, again, sub 99%. So... There's all sorts of slightly conflicting information out there and it's difficult to draw an exact conclusion. What are our expectations today? Any, anything better than 94% transmission from molybdenum is going to be a success, it would appear. And for the copper mirrors, well, it would appear that our expectation should be 98%. Now, although my machine is still pretty damn good, after uh, a year after the tube was installed. Um, I'm going to just run the test a couple of times just to warm the tube up because I have noticed that it does drop very slightly after the first yeah. few tests. Before we start the tests, I just need to assure myself that the beam is actually going to hit the target in the right place. And check how we are. That's not perfect, but reasonable. And now we'll check that one out. Again, not perfect, but reasonable. I'm very confident that my beam is hitting the mirrors. So what we do, we run a test. And you can see that even the unfocused beam is throwing about 70 watts down at that water. is actually causing the surface water to evaporate. We started off at 10.3 degrees 
and we're finished up at 42. As you probably all know by now, the way this doohickey works, what we have to do is calculate the temperature rise um, for the test, which in this case is 42 minus 10.3, which equals 31.7. And then the particular calibration range that I'm using with 20.5 seconds is a times two range. So I've got to multiply the result by two, which is 63.4 watts. Now, what I've now got to do is check that that is consistent. So we'll do another test. Right, well, let's do the same test around the back here. 8.3, set the maximum. 8.2. So, 8.2 minus 43.5. equals 35.3 times 2 which equals 70.6 and we're comparing that to about I mean that should be looking at my chart the chart says I should finish up with about 71 or 72 watts that's not far out considering that calibration chart was done a year ago. So we've got 63 divided by 70.6 equals 89% which means we've lost 11% over three mirrors 3.6% loss per mirror, 3.7%. So we've done better than we were expecting for molybdenum. Now, just out of interest, um, I've put the copper mirrors in. This is the last one, but I'm just backing each one up with an O-ring just so that there's even pressure on the mirror and not local pressure, which might cause distortion. And there we go, five minutes sees all the mirrors change without any dramas. That's no, totally wrong now. And that's spot on. So we'll just run a couple, three times before we do a test. Eight point one minus thirty seven point five to nine point four. Oh, my goodness me, times two equals fifty eight point eight. Quick calculation we've got fifty eight point eight watts at the front here, fifty eight point eight at the front here and we're going to divide that by 69.7 at the back equals 84 percent 16 percent loss three mirrors 5.3 percent per mirror which is absolutely astoundingly bad so the problem now is why these are flat but not as highly polished interesting question well, I've been very disappointed with the uh, first attempt at my copper mirrors and so I've decided to be a little bit brutal with them as uh, always the case and I couldn't work out why they might not be working. Now what I've done at the moment is to polish, to a mirror polish, the two mirrors, this one and number one and we're going to see what improvement we've made. So with two mirrors we've got 
0.8 divided by 69.8 equals 12 percent as opposed to 16 percent so we've got a little bit more work that we can do we've got first of all another mirror to do here which might take it down to 9 or 10 percent and so what I'll do I'll show you how I how I'm re how I'm bringing this mirror this number two mirror up to speed and I've got a very simple piece of soft cloth here it's very difficult to hold this so what I'm doing is I'm putting a little teeny weeny square of double sided tape <coughs> on the back here something that will stick it to my finger as I rub it around so I'll stick it to my finger and I'll put some of my uh, Meguiar's all metal polish it's NXL getting low on this I should have to get some more apply that to the surface now it's already shiny but I can still see in there what looks like the grain structure of the material around the edge it's becoming quite polished but in the middle it's still very sort of um, grainy And that's beginning to polish up quite nicely another minute of work on it and I think that might be there now I'm trying to apply pressure right in the middle now I realize the edge will get slightly curled but because this is only polish it won't curl it quite so much and I'm losing about a mil and a half all around the edge of the mirror anyway so from what I've seen so far the middle is staying flat now that's a mirror as you can see as it passes across there even at the edge it isn't really curling too much right on that bottom corner there it's still remaining flat to the edge so I'm pretty pleased with that because it means that the company that made them for me have got them nice and flat and 99 or 95% shiny and I'm just putting the final touches to it. I shall just test with this device here. So this is the Macken meter which I use as my reference. Sixty three four five. Wow, that one says sixty six point three. <laughs> And from the back of the machine, 71.4. So those are my two numbers. And this is the final result on copper mirrors. So we have three copper mirrors in here now, highly polished, 66.3. Divided by 71.4 equals 93%. So that's 7%, which is marginally over the 2% per mirror that we were given to anticipate. So it was a near success to prove that copper mirrors will do a job.
So we looked back at three molybdenum mirrors and we were losing 11%. Well, thanks for your patience uh, following this copper mirror saga. Was it worth it? Well, I suppose on balance, the copper mirrors are better than anything else that's out there. Um, but it's taken a lot of effort to get there and cost for benefit? If I'm honest, no. Satisfaction of knowing? Yes, I'm happy. Not as happy as I thought I would be, but I'm still fairly happy because they still come out top of the pile. The only other choice that we have is proper gold, and the gold that I saw, I'm confident, was some yellow stuff that was not what it seemed. Silver has got definite possibilities, but the problem with silver is it's much, much easier to tarnish in atmosphere and a lot more difficult to protect it. So, although my copper mirrors the last time I tried them lasted three or four months and I didn't need to touch them, um, I'm not so sure that silver mirrors would last anywhere near that long. I'm going to leave the copper mirrors in here because they're certainly better than the, uh, the molybdenum mirrors that were in here, but the molybdenum mirrors have gone back in the, in the cupboard for a rainy day. I suppose I could look at it another way. I can get on with my life now. So yes, we've still got lots of subjects to, to look at, lots of things, lots of questions that I need answered. Um, we've touched on the effectiveness, for instance, of air assist. Mm, that was air assist for cutting. That wasn't air assist for engraving. And that's a whole different subject. So I'll see you in the next session.